The World Federation of Hemophilia eLearning Platform is your one stop for easy access to all bleeding disorders educational resources. There are over 700 resources that are free to view online, download, and share with your community. The WFH translates into up to eight languages, and some of our national member organizations, or NMOs, have added translations, which bring the total languages on our site to over 20. Today, we'll do a short demonstration of some of the features of the platform that I think will help you to find the resources that meet your learning needs and interests. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to go into all of the features of the platform, but I would really encourage you to explore it yourself, and you can always send me any questions that you might have via the Contact Us option here at the top. So, let's dive in. This is the eLearning Platform homepage. As you can see, there are a number of large banners that rotate here at the top. Each of these presents a recent or a highlight resource that we've put on the platform. If you click on any one of these banners, it'll take you directly to that resource. If we scroll down here, we'll see below the banners, the e-learning centers. And here we find eight themed centers around topics of bleeding disorders. So if we wanted to learn more, for example, about inhibitors, we could click here on the inhibitors icon, and that will take us to the inhibitors e-learning center. Again, here at the top are some banners. A lot of the resources that we're highlighting at the moment are around the COVID-19 situation, but you'll also find specific resources highlighted, such as the monograph on inhibitors. Here we have the inf information tab, and the information tab, of course, provides basic information about inhibitors. So these are really just two clicks away. When you come to the e-learning platform, in just a couple of clicks, you're right into the information that you need. You don't need to download a document or go searching for it. If you want to take a look at a different e-learning center, there are two ways you can do that. You can either click here on the logo of the WFH. This will always bring you back to the home page of the e-learning platform. Or you can go here into the menu of e-learning centers and select a different topic, such as novel therapies. So just like the inhibitors e-learning center, the novel therapies e-learning center has an information tab here on the right. Again, here we find basic information about the need for novel therapies, and if we scroll on down, we'll get an introduction to gene therapy and non-factor replacement therapy. You'll also see that this content is cross-linked, so if it would be helpful to know more about inhibitors to understand this content, we can click through to the Inhibitors eLearning Center. I'll also draw your attention to the bar here on the left, and this is how we can share content. So anything we find on the e-learning platform that we want to share with our community, we can post to social media, or we can send direct, directly by email to somebody. Now we mentioned that the e-learning centers are hubs for information and resources. The resources are found over here in the left-hand side tab. Here you see specific resources that are really relevant to the novel therapies topic. So we've gathered some of the webcasts from previous world congresses, we have some e-learning modules, journal articles, a whole series of resources that allow you to go into greater depth about this topic. And if you click on any one of these resources, it'll click and bring you right through to that resource. So this is a typical view of a resource on the platform. This is the Gene Therapy e-learning module. It's part of a series of modules that we've produced. Always you will have an image on the left side, the year that the resource was published, the languages that it's available in, information about the authors, and you can click directly to view the resource, or you can roll down a bit more and get some more information in this additional information space. So you can see that this is part of a series, and it's actually really recommended that you do modules one and two before you dive into module three. Let's say we have done those modules and we want to explore module three, we can click through here, and this directs us to the e-learning module. The e-learning modules are a really fun interactive way to learn about some pretty complex information. We've taken some really advanced scientific information from some of our subject matter experts and adapted it into a learning tool that has things like a glossary, um, interactive pop-ups, slideshows, some really nice graphics, and it just really helps to bring some fairly complex content to life. You'll notice that the module opened up into its own window here. So you can always pop back to the previous view of the resource here. So 
So just to recap, the e-learning centers are hubs of information and resources around bleeding disorders topics. You can access them from the drop-down menu here or from the e-learning platform homepage that you can always access by clicking on the logo here. Now I know that a lot of you know WFH resources really well. You probably have a lot of favorites that you usually go to that you share with other people. And one easy way to find a lot of those on the e-learning platform is here in the Featured Tools menu. I think you'll probably recognize right away some of your favorites here, like the Treatment Guidelines, the Hemophilia and Pictures, uh, the HemoAction Games. And here we see the e-learning modules. So just like the Gene Therapy module we just looked at, we have a whole collection of e-learning modules, and they all live here, and they're organized into programs by themes. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to dive a little deeper into the lab manual. The lab manual is a collection of protocols that are used in the diagnosis of hemophilia and other bleeding disorders. You can download the resource directly here, as well as access it in the other WFH official translations. But this is a really good example of where the platform allows us to offer you a bit more. In addition to just the PDF, we can add other resources here in the additional information space. So here you find three demonstration videos. Many of you may recognize our good friend Steve Kitchen, one of our volunteers, and in each of these videos he provides a really careful demonstration of how to do these techniques. And he works through examples, does some troubleshooting, and we also provide some supplementary resources such as some graph paper that you can download, the protocols themselves, and record sheets so that you can do these, these assays as well. So this is a nice example of how, in addition to the basic PDF, we can provide other resources associated with them. And I would invite you to explore all of the resources in the Featured Tools section. I'm sure you will find many of your old favorites and probably some new ones too. So the last thing I want to show you today in our little demonstration is how to search this platform. With over 700 resources, it's important that you're able to search it to find whatever you're looking for. And you can do that in two places. Here, there's a search resources field. And over here, we have a find a resource page that we can access. If we go to that page, we see all of the resources on the platform displayed in reverse chronological order. So whatever we added most recently, and then working backwards. And like I said, there's over 700 of them. So let's say in this time when so many of us are in confinement, you're thinking about exercising and you're wondering if there's anything that the WFH can help you with about exercises. So you can just type the keyword in here and run a search and you'll find that yeah, we have a guide of exercises for people with hemophilia. And I think a lot of you probably know this resource. This was developed by Kathy Mulder, a physiotherapist who worked with us for many years. And if we scroll down, we can see that this is an illustrated guide, and it's got detailed descriptions of exercises, and this is something that was designed both for people with hemophilia and their families and for healthcare providers. And you'll see again here that you can share this with anybody. You can see that it's available in the six WFH translations, but also, interestingly, there's a whole lot of other languages down here. And these are translations that were done by our national member organizations. So if you'd rather read this in, let's say, Czech, you can click through here, and up comes the resource in Czech. So you can download that directly. You'll see here that there's a little disclaimer, and that's because this is not an official WFH translation. But we do encourage not-for-profit patient organizations and our NMOs to seek permission to translate our resources. They can do that by clicking here, or you go into the Contact Us page, there's also a tab where you can fill out a form, and that begins the conversation where we can work together to try to grant you permission to create a translation of the WFH resource. One of the conditions of the WFH granting permission to reproduce a resource is that the group must give us a copy so that we can share it here. And as many NMOs have done this, we now have almost 40 resources available in almost 20 languages. So let's think of a different scenario where maybe you're looking for some kind of resources. Maybe you want to start a VWD outreach program, and you've heard that the WFH has a great series of panel discussions on VWD outreach. So you can just run a keyword search 
for VWD and see what comes up. And there's 70 resources that come up, but you don't have to go through all 70 of them. You can take advantage of this category filter over here, and you can select that you only want to see panel discussions. So if you run that search with that filter, then that will return you just very specifically the three outreach discussions. So this is a great resource to get started on your new project. Sometimes we don't know exactly what we're looking for. So let's say you're having a conversation with somebody um, and you realize they've got questions around relationships and dating. So you can just put that keyword in and see if anything comes up. And actually, yeah, there are two great resources around this. One is a conversation from Congress 2018 in Glasgow um, between a group of women looking at a number of the different challenges and visions that they face. And then there's also this video that the WSH has produced, which is an expert Q&A on hemophilia relationships and intimacy. And here again, you can see that it's available in a couple of different languages. So maybe, maybe your friend who had some questions would rather view this in Spanish. You can always share that with them via direct email. Or maybe your NMO or your patient group would like to put that out on Facebook or on Twitter. Speaking of language preferences, you can also use the filters on the Find a Resource page to look for resources in a certain language. So just like you can search by category here, you can also search by language. So if we just select Spanish, we can run a search for all of the Spanish resources on the platform. And you probably won't be surprised that there are quite a few. There's over 120. You can also narrow down within those 120. Let's say you just want to find patient information booklets in Spanish, then you can combine those filters. So you have the filter on the category, and you have a filter now on the language. And if you run that combined search, you'll find you'll pull up a different collection. So here are all of the patient information booklets that are available in Spanish. So just to recap, in this Find a Resource page, there are over 700 resources. But there are a lot of tools that you can use in terms of categories, languages, and keywords to narrow that down and find really what you're looking for, and of course, share it with your community. I hope that this short demonstration has helped you to find your way around the WFH eLearning platform and given you a taste to explore it more. All of the resources in the collection were made to meet a specific educational need identified in the bleeding disorders community and we're constantly making and adding more. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to the WFH IT team who custom built this platform and continue to build and maintain it. I hope that you will find what you need here on the platform and that you will send us feedback on the platform and on the resources. You can send comments, questions, ideas for new features and resources by clicking on the Contact Us tab here. We'd love to hear from you.